All right, hello and welcome everybody um, to your virtual college fair. Um, Matthew is my name. Um, I'm thrilled to be your host for the night um, and it's wonderful to have you here. Um, I'm gonna go over just a couple notes prior um, to starting, um, but then we will jump right in. You will hear from some wonderful schools. Um, during this whole time, um, the Q&A is turned on for you to ask anything that you may have. Um, my only ask is that if you have a question for one school versus you, if you have a question for the whole group to notate that so we know who to send it to you, send it to. Um, and the Q&A is up the entire time. So do not wait in, um, in, um, until the end. If you have something to ask, please uh, feel free to put it in um, as soon as you do. Um, do know that your microphones and cameras are turned off during this time. So your only role is to sit back, take notes, um, and listen to all these wonderful schools have to share with you. This is session two out of three for the night, and this is day one out of two days for the whole fair. Um, so definitely, if you haven't yet, sign up for more. Um, there's a lot to hear um, in this whole college search process. Um, at the link that you signed up for this session, um, a re recording of this will be in about um, a week's time. So if there's anything you need to look back to take more notes, um, do know that that tool will be for you um, in a couple of days. Just to orient ourselves right now, we are in session B1 where my cursor is. Um, and these are the schools you will hear from during our time. Um, all right, with my notes done, um, I'm gonna get off screen um, and you're gonna hear from some wonderful schools. So with that being said, the first school you will hear from tonight, um, Allegheny College. Hi everyone, I am going to share my screen and we will get talking about Allegheny. All right, so Allegheny College, we are located in Meadville, Pennsylvania. I am Danielle Nesper and I'm Assistant Director of Admissions here at the college. Allegheny was founded in 1815, which makes us the 32nd oldest college in the nation. Oops, let's get this full screen for you guys. All right, some quick facts about Allegheny. We are a small private liberal arts institution. We have on campus about 1800 students and are an undergraduate institution only. We are also 100% residential. So what that means is you will have housing guaranteed all four years during your time at Allegheny. And we have multiple levels of housing as well. So we have the traditional residence halls all the way up to suite style of living, apartment style of living, and of course, townhouses. On average, our class sizes are about 18 people um, or smaller. And then of course, our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. Something we're extremely proud of is in 2020, we achieved carbon neutrality, which makes us the eighth college in the US to achieve this and the first in PA. If you ever come visit our campus, you'll notice a lot of green initiatives. And now that we reached our goal, we can actually put more money and more funds into bringing more green initiatives to campus. So something we're very proud of here at Allegheny. Speaking of that, like I said, we are located in Meadville, Pennsylvania. If you're really good with your PA geography, we're up in the top or um, top upper hand corner of the state, about an hour and a half north of Pittsburgh and a little over an hour and a half east of Cleveland. On our campus this year, we have about 48 states represented in 70 countries. The top 10 states are on your left hand side of the screen there. So what I like to highlight about that is our campus is full of students from all over. So you're not going to go to class, you're not going to have um, student activities with students of similar backgrounds. So you're going to get to learn how to work with people um, from all over and get to learn about their history and their background. And for a small school, it's a pretty diverse campus. When asked what distinguishes Allegheny, I always think of it as three main things. The first is our experiential learning opportunities. The second is our major minor combination. And then of course our third is our undergraduate research opportunities. So first off our experiential learning, we truly believe that learning doesn't just happen in a classroom through a textbook, it also happens out in the real world. So a lot of our classes are discussion based and group work based and they're actually designed to focus more on leadership skills and group work skills to make sure that you have those very tangible um, skills that employers are looking for in the field. In addition to that, our faculty often partner with local Meadville businesses, organizations, to make sure that you're getting real world client work as well. Now, I wanna jump over and talk about our major and minor combination. So something that makes us unique is we do require students to have a major and a minor, and they do have to be in different divisions. And this is just because we wanna highlight 
that liberal arts idea of having knowledge across the board, having it in a little bit of um, areas. So your major can come out of any of our four divisions here, the humanities, natural science, social sciences, of course, interdivisional. And then your minor just comes out of a different one and that's it. The nice thing about our curriculum is it is very flexible and it's very customizable. So you are gonna to get to dictate what kind of classes you're interested in taking. And you do not need to declare that major minor combination until your second semester sophomore year. So you have plenty of time to figure out what that may or may not be. Some highlights and some unique programs that are at Allegheny include our environmental science and sustainability program, our energy and society program. Of course, global health studies, art science and innovation is also a really um, new and popular major on our campus. And of course we have our stables like our biology, chemistry, biochemistry, computer science, et cetera, et cetera. Um, additionally on our campus, you can also take part of our pre-professional advising tracks which include pre-law, pre-med, pre-health, engineering, and of course pre and or <laughs> sorry, engineering, and then of course, education. Now, finally, I wanna talk about our senior research or our senior comprehensive um, project. And when I use the term research, I'm using it in the broadest sense. This project can be entirely whatever you wanna make it. It is completely an original idea that you propose, you conduct, and then ultimately once you're done with it, you defend it in front of a few faculty, about three or four. It is very, very similar to a graduate level thesis. And the thing I love with the senior comp is you truly get to make it what you want. So um, some of my favorite examples include a student last year who graduated, she was on the pre-med track and she did hers based off of playing surfaces for athletes. So if you played on turf versus playing on a court, how did that affect your joints and ultimately your health overall? So you can really take this project and kind of run with it. The other nice thing is we have a seminar series. So every year you're taking a class that builds up your research skills. So by the time you're senior, you've already done research and you kind of have a good understanding of what's happening and what you need to be successful in this endeavor. Finally, what does this all mean? <laughs> well, about 60% of our graduating class go directly into the workforce. Within six months of graduation, about 95% of those students are hired. 30% um, will opt into going to a graduate program, a professional school, PhD type program. A fun fact about Allegheny is our medical and law school rates are actually double the national average. Those tend to trend around about 80 to 100% depending on the year. And of course, about 10% of our um, students will opt to go into a paid nonprofit or service type work. We partner a lot with the Peace Corps, Teach for America. Um, we also partner with some local Pittsburgh um, service organizations as well. If you are interested in service, it's not a requirement on our campus, but we have a lot of programs and cohorts set up that you can easily get involved with local service, but also international service as well. So that was a very, very brief overview of everything Allegheny. If you are interested in learning more, I definitely recommend checking out Mind Over Major. Um, it is our new website, which will help you walk you through our academic offerings. And I'll list the link in the chat. And of course, I hope that you will come visit us either virtually or in person. We are doing in-person events starting mid-March. So definitely check that out on our website. And like I said, I'll follow up with information in the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to email us at admissions at allegheny.edu. And thanks for your time. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, folks. So the next school you will hear from tonight, um, College of Worcester. Great. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, uh, before I start, so my name is April Gamble. I'm from the College of Worcester. I'm a senior assistant director here. Before I start, I just want to acknowledge um, that this year and um, has been really challenging for um, high school students, whether you're a sophomore or a junior or a senior even, um, it's just been a really difficult year. And um, I think one good thing to know is that colleges are aware of that. Colleges are aware that things have not gone um, in the way that you had planned, whether that's academics or sports or clubs or organizations you're involved with. Um, and so really, if you have questions um, about you know, what's happened for you in terms of academics or extracurriculars, I would encourage you to reach out to um, whatever colleges you're interested in and sit down and talk to your admissions officer, you know, whether that's virtually or eventually in person, um, they're there to help you and support you along the way. Um, so I'm going to talk really briefly um, three things about Worcester today. I'm going to talk a little bit about our location in the city of Worcester. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our global campus and our thriving community. And then I'll talk um, about research, about mentored undergraduate research. And I'm actually delighted to be um, 
following Allegheny because there's some wonderful similarities between our two schools in terms of the emphasis on research. So it's wonderful you've been able to, you'll be able to hear about two of these opportunities. So the um, city of Worcester, we're about an hour from Cleveland, about an hour and a half from Columbus, about 30,000 residents. It's a really fun, vibrant downtown, lots of little coffee shops. Um, bookstores, um, restaurants that do a lot of farm to table around here. One of the nice things about being in a smaller town is that there are a lot of um, internship possibilities, a lot of ways to connect to the local community, whether that's the local school system, um, law firms in town, or one of our two local hospitals. Here's a great photo of a new park in town. Um, one of the first year seminar classes, which is one of the first year classes all students take, paired with a local park system and did some native tree planting. Um, this is a great park to go running in in town. It's about 1.7 miles, really, really hilly, but wonderful. Um, one of the other programs I, was, I mentioned briefly before, um, it's called Health Coach. Um, so Worcester, the College of Worcester pairs with our local community hospital um, and teaches a quarter credit class for students who are interested in the pre-health field. And after taking that course, you're actually paired with um, a patient in the community. It's a great chance for students interested in pre-health to figure out if they're interested more in the research or in the people's aspect of healthcare. Um, we have a wonderful campus, about 240 acres. Like Allegheny, we are 100% residential, lots of different um, kinds of residence halls on campus. Um, just some fun shots showing students at hammocks enjoying a sunny day. And then this is really what today looked like more in Worcester. There's a great sense of spirit on campus. Um, you'll hear bagpipers in various places. Um, bagpipes are part of our Scottish heritage. If you're a bagpiper or a dancer, a Scottish dancer or an Irish dancer, we have a great Scottish art scholarship. We also have some wonderful music scholarships and performing arts scholarships. So about 30% of our students are from Ohio. We have about 46 states and 65 countries represented in our student body. If you add in our faculty and staff, that number becomes even more diverse and more wonderful. Lots of different clubs on campus. Worcester is a college um, where we are, um, there's a commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so you'll see lots of different clubs and organizations that support various affinity groups. About a third of our students are involved in music in some way, and about a third of them are involved in varsity athletics. It's a great shot of one of my favorite students who graduated last year, Aubrey. Um, and here's a, a little bit more about theater and dance. One of our acapella groups on campus. So the next point I wanna make is talk a little bit about mentored undergraduate research. All students at Worcester um, take a year long um, dive into research their senior year. We call it independent study. Independent study um, can be experimental in the natural sciences. It can be creative in the arts, or analytical, or really all three. Here's some briefly just some titles of independent studies that students did last year. You'll see there's a great range. Um, and we are definitely um, recognized for our emphasis on research. We're also, I think, a co college where there's a wonderful, um, there's a sense of joy and there's happiness and there's a lot going on in our campus. Um, we've been recently featured in Ron Lieber's new book on um, financial transparency. Um, again, here's my email. Um, I just wanna point out really quickly that um, Worcester is a college where, um, like most of the colleges, I think on this, um, panel today, we, um, we're not requiring test scores. We are a school that is, um, we became test optional a few years ago. Um, even if you do submit test scores, we are not going to use them as we determine merit aid. Applying to Worcester, there are lots of different ways, early decision, early action, or regular decision. Um, again, we do have merit scholarships. Some of them are in the performance or competitive um, arts. Um, and yes, Thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you. It's great to see pictures of the snow and sun because as someone who's also from the snow, um, I think both are beautiful. Um, just a note once again, if folks have anything to ask that the Q&A is turned on. Um, once again, if you just have a question for one school, um, note that school versus if you have a question for the group, note that it's for the group. All right, with that being said, the next school you will hear from tonight um, is Hanover College. Hi, 
Hello, everybody. My name is Wilda Connect. I am an admission counselor from Hanover College. Um, I just wanted to see that we can, there we go, see the screen all right. Um, I oversee the Ohio students and that enroll at Hanover College, so I am the best person to ask any sort of question um, that you may have regarding Hanover, the application process, programs that we offer, and some of our unique opportunities as well. Um, a little bit about myself, I am a Hanover graduate from the class of 2017 with a unique background in Spanish and biochemistry. Uh, which is a, a strikingly different combination than what you typically see, but that is one of the things that I loved about Hanover was the, the flexibility in our academics. Um, Hanover College is located in Southern Indiana. We are in the middle of the tri-state area. So if you essentially draw a triangle between Indianapolis, Cincinnati, and Louisville, Kentucky, then you will find us at the center of that triangle. Um, our campus is situated along the scenic Ohio River, so it's a beautiful overlook, uh, that's for sure. And um, our campus in total is about 650 acres, but only about 200 of those acres have actual buildings. The rest is uh, reserved for our athletic complex, as well as um, we have over two and a half miles of hiking trails available, um, a low ropes course, and then our outdoor lab facilities for our biology and natural sciences. So a lot to see as far as green space on campus. Um, I do wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about the academic opportunities. So one of the benefits of being in a small school is the close student to faculty ratio. We do have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio, um, which basically means that if you wanna to get to know your professor who hopefully will become one of your colleagues uh, later on in life, you definitely can maintain that relationship starting as early as your first year. Um, all of our students are given an academic advisor in their field of study. And then we take it one step further. If you're deciding to do a, a sub-concentration within your field, um, for example, if you're interested in psychology and more specifically neuropsychology, uh, we actually have one of our professors who has their doctorate with the neuropsychology background. And so you would work with them specifically as they can help you the most with your next steps after college. We also have an average class size of about 17 students. Um, this is, like I said, pretty average, but they can be as small as two students in some of those upper level difficult courses um, to about 20 is, is pretty much as big as we want to get. Our professors really like a hands-on learning experience. Our academic calendar is a little unique than other schools. We have what's called a 4-4-1 calendar. And what that means is you take four courses in the fall four courses in the winter term, which we are currently in our winter term. And then you take one course in the spring term, um, which is only the, uh, the one month of May. So we often call it a May term. Um, and there's a lot of unique opportunities with that, including extra classes, extended internship opportunities, study abroad opportunities, um, and just the way that the breaks shift with our testing schedule. Um, a lot of students really enjoy the fact that they get at least a week off after every testing period, including midterms. We do have dif uh, 34 different majors, including a design your own major. So if you're looking for the Hanover experience, but you don't see the academic listing in our academic majors, then you can actually pull one from another institution and um, collaborate with different faculty departments to create your very own major. So it's a very hands-on learning experience for sure. Some of our distinctive programs include education, which um, is a fully licensed program and has 100% placement of students within seven months in the education sector. Um, communication, this is not only our most popular uh, major, but it's also the most commonly paired as a double major or a minor. It is a very essential, especially with the the virtual world that we've become um, so far. Natural sciences is definitely one of our top majors. Um, not only is it very successful for our students uh, with the outdoor lab spaces that we have, we also have a very unique um, analytical lab that is second to none with its instruments that we have. Um, but our students work hand in hand for the best faculty in their field. And this has led to 100% of our students not only getting into one of their top two graduate program choices, but also with funding. So our students are getting funding after the, the undergraduate level, which is pretty impressive um, for this day and age. Secondly, engineering is one of our most rapidly growing uh, programs, I think because uh, the students are, are very interested in how engineering works and how they can improve our world. And we love to foster that. 
And then the last two programs would be health sciences and our business scholars program. Our health sciences program is very unique in the fact that we are one of very few undergraduate schools that have a full human cadaver lab, as well as two patient simulators, which are robot simulators, and um, an exercise physiology lab that students can use um, to prepare themselves for those pre-health professions. We also have a one-of-a-kind, unique internship experience with the local hospital. It is modeled off of a medical school's residency program, but for the undergraduate student. And students can start that as early as their sophomore year. So you could potentially see some of these lab opportunities, research opportunities, and externships uh, for three years before going into medical school, which is a great way to assess what role you want to have in the health field. And then our business scholars program is unique in the fact that Part of the academic requirements is to participate in a paid internship um, that is project-based. So anything you do in that internship, you carry that name with that business. Uh, we partner with a lot of local businesses um, and things like that that help uh, connect students not only to the local area, but also we, we have international connections and larger city placements as well. One thing I mentioned with our academic calendar was the study abroad opportunities. At Hanover, we encourage study abroad and global learning um, in more than just the one traditional semester that you might have heard about before. The benefits and the differences of having the traditional semester abroad uh, versus the May term abroad is what kind of an experience you're looking for. So in the May term experience, students uh, are traveling with a group of Hanover students and a Hanover professor to that location. So it's sort of like an extended field trip Whereas the semester long is, is what you might traditionally think of when you think about a study abroad program. It's the full semester. You may go as yourself or there might be another Hanover student accompanying you to the same university and you do take courses from those professors from that university. We have 18 different semester long programs. Uh, some of them are language based and some of them are just uh, general knowledge based. So you can select whatever courses you want. And then May term courses, we have an abundance. And if you have a location that you really want to go to, then um, just ask the faculty. And a lot of times they'll create courses as long as there's enough student interest. So it's very, like I said, very hands-on with your academics. Just for time, I'm gonna to have to jump in. Um, okay. There's just so many wonderful things to share about all these schools. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to share for chat, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, all right, folks. Um, this is definitely where we always say at the start um, of a conversation because um, we could talk about our schools for hours because they're also great. Um, the next school you will hear from tonight um, is the University of Maryland. There we go, now we have video. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Kenya Taylor. I am the Assistant Director of Regional Recruitment and Alumni Relations at the University of Maryland. So the University of Maryland is a nationally ranked um, top tier research institution. So one of the many things that it means to be a research institution is that your professors are still very active in their field, working with different centers, labs, and organizations on larger changing, um, larger life-changing research projects, and our students get to be a part of that. So we are the flagship university for the state of Maryland, and we are the largest university in the state of Maryland. Um, but so our students get all of the amenities of being at a large division one um, university as far as the, um, the research opportunities, internships, the school spirit that's there from being in the D1 athletics, um, student life and all of the different technologies that we have on campus. But even with being at a large university, we're still able to offer some small school experiences. Our student to faculty ratio is 18 to one. And our students really do get the opportunities to get to know their professors and also to make those personal connections. We have a very vibrant and active and diverse student population. We have about 30,000 undergraduate students and about 43% of our undergraduate students identify as, 
um, a student of color. So we um, get students from all 50 states, including the state of Ohio, and over 100 different countries. So we have students from all walks of lives, every background here at the university. We have over 800 student organizations. So there is always something for our students to be a part of. And those organizations can range from multicultural, religious, professional, academic, sororities and fraternities, club, intramural sports, and also honors-based programs and different social programs as well. And like I mentioned before, we are division one in athletics and we have about 19 sports that um, compete on the division one level. And we are located in the beautiful city of College Park, Maryland, which is about 10 miles outside of Washington, DC, and about 20 miles from Annapolis, which is the capital of Maryland. So our students really do get the best of both worlds because College Park is a college town. And so when students are, you know, in in the town or even throughout the state of Maryland, you know, you're gonna see things that say go Terps. Um, Terrapin Nation, and just fill with our UMD Red, just kind of like my background here. So that school spirit is definitely felt throughout College Park and also throughout the state of Maryland. But then a lot of our students will take advantage of the opportunities that are available to them for um, by being so close to the nation's capital. So many of our students will decide to complete internships on you know, Capitol Hill, the national think tank agencies, the different federal agencies, and participate in the different cultural experiences that Washington DC has to offer from the National Smithsonian Museums, um, Cherry Blossom Festival, and so much more. And we are conveniently surrounded by three international airports, which makes getting to and from Ohio out to College Park very easy. We offer over 90 academic degree programs within our 12 academic colleges, plus our letters of uh, our School of Letters and Sciences, which is an advisement housing. It, it evaluates our students that are undecided or undeclared. So our majors um, will range from agriculture and natural sciences, architecture, arts and humanities, behavioral and social sciences, College of Information Sciences, Business, um, Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences, Journalism, um, Public Health, Public Policy. And some of our more popular majors are um, Computer Science, Engineering, Biological Sciences, Psychology, Government, and uh, Politics and Business. And we do have a um, a good handful of our majors that we consider to be limited enrollment programs, just because of the strong reputation that these programs have, they are highly sought after. So to maintain the quality of the programs, we do have to limit the number of students that we admit into, the, into these programs. So some of these programs are, um, they have additional or admissions requirements beyond the um, admissions requirements to get into the university. And like I mentioned before, um, we are a research institution and our, we are dedicated to making sure that our students have opportunities to you know, get that hands-on experience. So um, all of the learning um, at the university, some of the best learning does happen outside of the classroom. So our students have opportunities to um, partake in undergraduate research, um, internship opportunities, we have a very robust education abroad program. And on average, um, we had like the, for our students completing education abroad was above the national average. We are a do good campus. So our students and our um, faculty and staff 
are committed to service learning and to giving back to the community. And we do also have living learning communities and living learning communities um, will be like our honors program, our scholars program, um, civic kids, global studies, where students are able to live um, with students that share the same interests as them. And these programs are invite only that we do review students for when they apply for admissions. And as far as the application process, we are, um, our application is available on the Common App and also we are also on the coalition application. So students have a choice to choose selecting either one. Um, there is not a preference. So we do a very holistic Oh, oh, so sorry. Uh, oh, no. I have to jump in just for time too. We are on a roll with fantastic information tonight. Um, but just for time, I'm going to have to um, jump in for now. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, all right, folks, the next school you will hear from tonight, um, the University of Massachusetts. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, I am going to try to get right to it here. Um, so we're starting off with this great aerial view of campus here. We have three main campus areas, um, north, south, and east. Uh, we are right on the Merrimack River located in Lowell, Massachusetts, and I'll tell you more about that in just a second. Uh, we are located in Lowell, Massachusetts, about 25 miles or so northwest of Boston. It's a really great location, a super diverse, really vibrant city. Uh, about 110,000 people living in Lowell and then our campus, um, which is really a melting pot located right within the middle of all of that. It's a very accessible area. You could drive about an hour, an hour and a half in any direction and be anywhere in New England, which is really great. Uh, some numbers about campus here. Um, so we have expanded quite a bit in the last uh, 12 years or so. We currently have over 11,000 undergraduate students, a little over 18,000 students in total enrollment. Um, our average GPA for students coming in is about a 3.6. Our average SAT score is about a 1240 and our average ACT score is about a 26. Uh, but we are actually test optional and we have been since 2015, which has come in pretty handy this last year when SATs and ACTs have been hard to come by. Uh, about two thirds of our applicants so far this year have been um, applying without test scores. Uh, so we do have over 11,000 undergraduate students and we have over 120 different uh, majors for undergraduate students to choose from. Um, we do have six colleges, which I'll get into in just a second. Uh, we have about 70 different graduate options as well. And what's really great about how our undergraduate programs are set up is almost every single one is compatible with a uh, master's degree or a direct entry uh, doctoral program. So our students can stay on um, and go directly into a PhD program or they can stay for a fifth year for a master's degree. So if you know um, you're going into a field or it's going to be really handy to have a master's degree or if you just want to have that credential um, going into your industry, definitely saves a little bit of time and a little bit of money, which is great. Uh, we have expanded quite a bit in the last few years, but we have really tried to keep our class sizes pretty small. We have a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio. About half of our classes have fewer than 19 or 20 students, which is great. Um, more of the dynamic that you're used to in high school with some smaller classes, uh, more discussion based as opposed to being in lecture halls for every class. So we do offer uh, majors within six colleges. We have the Manning School of Business, the Zuckerberg College of Health Sciences, College of Education, Fine Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Uh, we also have the Francis College of Engineering, the Kennedy College of Sciences, some really popular majors. Um, all of our engineering programs are very popular as well as business, um, also psychology. We have a great nursing program. We also have a great exercise science program, uh, which does allow students to flow really smoothly into our uh, doctorate of physical therapy, um, which is also the only uh, public PhD um, for physical therapy in Massachusetts. Uh, we also have a great honors college. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, some of those four plus one uh, master's degrees. So you are kind of double dipping your senior year, taking some undergrad classes and some grad classes simultaneously. 
we love talking about experiential learning at UMass Lowell. Um, so we do offer co-ops to our engineering, business, and science students. Uh, we are in a really great location for that. We're right in the Merrimack River Valley, um, not far from Boston, from Cambridge, um, Nashua, New Hampshire as well. Um, so our students are able to work with a lot of different labs and companies. Um, we actually have some biomedical engineering students working with Pfizer right now on a coronavirus vaccine. So it's all very relevant um, research happening. Um, so co-ops are more of a full-time actually working opportunity. Students do not take classes for that semester, um, whereas internships can be taken really at any time. They can be on campus, off campus. Um, you can get credits. Sometimes they're paid, um, but you can take those in conjunction with your regular classes. Um, in a typical non-global pandemic year, we do offer over 300 different study abroad options for students. Uh, we have 23 different countries with partner universities, and that could be kind of anything. Students can go somewhere for a couple of weeks. Uh, they can do an internship abroad, research abroad, um, go for a traditional semester, a full year, or a summer. So if that is something you know that you want to accomplish while you're at UMass Lowell, uh, they will find a way to help you get abroad, which is so fun. Uh, industry partnerships, clinical, practicum, service learning, um, these really all boil down for me to our location. So like I said, we're very accessible to the Boston area. Uh, we have nursing students right in Lowell General Hospital, um, also going into the teaching hospitals um, right in and around Boston. Uh, we have our education students teaching right in and around Lowell. Uh, service learning classes um, take place every semester. We also have some great service opportunities through our student activities office. So there's always really great ways to get connected uh, to the community um, and to really put your skills and your passions to good use. Campus life, we have a super vibrant campus. Uh, we do have about 275 clubs and organizations and that really runs the full gamut. Uh, we are a division one athletic school, which is always so fun to go to those games. Uh, we do have housing available for all four years as well. And about 60% of our student body lives directly on or in the immediate vicinity of campus in any given year. Um, just quickly, my last slide here, um, some deadlines. So we have two early action deadlines, November 5th and January 5th. Regular decision um, is actually February 5th. And this year we are continuing with rolling admissions. Um, and my name is Alyssa DeMarco and my email is right on the screen if you have any more questions for me. Fantastic, thank you so much. All right. Um, Last but certainly not least, um, Edinburgh University. Right. Hi, everybody. Uh, let me get everything popped up here. Uh, my name is Kyle Chairman. I'm one of the assistant directors uh, here at Edinburgh University. We are uh, one of the Pennsylvania state schools. We are just over the border from Ohio. We're about 20 minutes south of the city of Erie. Um, and so we're about an hour and a half from Cleveland. We're about 4,000, uh, 4, 4,500 uh, students here on campus, about 3,000 or so of those are undergraduates. Um, our students study all kinds of things. Probably what we're most known for academically is our art program. So we have programs in uh, digital and traditional animation, uh, graphic design, uh, ceramics, woodworking, painting, drawing, everything like that. Um, we also offer programs in the hard sciences, biology, chemistry, and the geosciences, as well as a nursing program, speech pathology, uh, school of business, and a lot of education programs. One of the things about the um, state uh, schools here in Pennsylvania is we were all founded as teaching colleges. So we all do education from, uh, you know, K through four, four through eight, nine through 12, as well as special education and deaf education. Um, we also have programs in um, you know, psychology, in sociology, criminal justice, you know, we kind of run the whole gamut um, here. Um, you know, we have a lot of academic resources as well. Um, you know, we, we have a, a library that's just about to be renovated here um, this year, which is pretty exciting, simulation labs for our nursing programs, a, a planetarium and observatory for our students in the geosciences. So there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, we have a lot of ways for students to get involved uh, we have 150 plus clubs organizations, Division Two and Division One sports. Our Division One sport is wrestling. Um, our newest sport is esports, so we do participate at the varsity level in esports. Um, so we have students that are gaming, um, you know, Fortnite, League of Legends, uh, Rocket League, uh, you know, uh, among others. 
So there's a lot of ways for students to get involved. Our campus is very traditional, um, you know, college campus here, a uh, very small college town, a real tight knit community. Um, you know, we do get a lot of students that come from both Ohio and New York, um, just based on our location kind of between them. Uh, you know, our students live on campus all four years. If they want, they have the option. Um, for our students coming from out of state, they're gonna live on campus for at least two years, um, their freshman and sophomore year. We have suite style living as well as traditional housing. Uh, one very unique thing, we do have a pet friendly option. So if students want to bring their pets, dogs, cats, et cetera, et cetera, uh, they can. We have some really nice living learning communities as well. We offer some great opportunities. Um, you know, another one is uh, we do some nice study abroad opportunities for students if students want to go travel. Uh, one of our most popular trips every year, our animation program goes to Japan, um, which is a great trip. And we also go to Scotland. We, you know, like like the College of Worcester, we have bagpipes on our campus as well. Uh, we were founded by Scottish immigrants. So that's really cool as, uh, you know, as well. Um, we have some great uh, housing options for our suite style living. So students can have their own spaces or they can have a shared space. Um, a lot of options for them. Uh, you know, we do have a couple deadlines um, as well. Nothing super, uh, you know, kind of, uh, aggressive, but November 1st, we, we consider our early action deadline. So we definitely encourage students to get a, um, you know, get their applications in before then. Our application opens up July 1st. Um, so for those students, you know, that are uh, interested in coming, check things out. Um, and then November 1st is our early action deadline and February 1st, our priority deadline. Um, you know, we just need, you know, an application and transcript. We are test optional. Um, for this year, and we're uh, going to be test optional for the foreseeable future. Um, we do offer freshman scholarships. They range from $1,500 to $5,000 a year. Um, we also offer, um, you know, some sort of out-of-state incentive. It, it has changed in the past, so I don't want to say, you know, what, um, what it, it might be, but, you know, we do offer, um, you know, an incentive for our students coming from out-of-state. Um, and then we also, I also recommend you come up and visit campus. So we, um, you know, we are doing in-person visits right now, um, really easy to register. You can go on our website um, and my information is up there. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And that is gonna be it for me here, so. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, all right, folks, we, heard so many wonderful things that we went right up until our time, um, which is great. That means there's definitely more um, conversations to be had. Just a couple of notes as we wrap up then. Once again, a huge thank you to the, uh, the reps um, who gave their time sharing with us, and a huge thank you to the students who showed up um, to listen. Um, just a couple notes as I close out of this window, um, a survey will pop up. If you could fill that out, that would be wonderful. Um, it helps the fair um, quite, uh, quite a bit. Um, as I noted, this is session two out of three for this night and day one of two for the whole fair. So if you haven't signed up for, uh, for more, um, please feel free uh, to do so. Um, and the same link that you signed up for this one um, will have a link to this at the end of um, in about a week's time, so you can go back and take notes and really make sure um, everything that um, you um, heard, you can hear once again. Um, all right, thank you once again uh, for being here. We hope you have a wonderful night. Um, be safe um, and be well. Bye, everybody.